Hello, my name is Visor, and welcome to game 23 of Let's Play Game Dev Tycoon. Last episode, we made our penalty game, a sequel to Block Lord Matumbo, that's going to do pretty well for what it was. The sales numbers will suffer a bit because we didn't hype the game at all, but, you know, that was the penalty game, and that was one of the penalties. Since last episode, I trained a bunch of my employees, and Jonathan Richardson is now a technology specialist. But that didn't actually unlock anything, so... Either I did something wrong, or something different's gonna happen down the line. We'll see. However, I can't train him in boost right now, which I believe is exactly what it sounds like. It's a way to boost his stats or output for a little bit. And he's really the only one that I can train on this right now, so we might as well do it to him and have him be our guinea pig. While this is going on, I'm probably gonna do another contract, just to keep everyone busy. Now, right now, everybody's vacation time is synced, so hopefully doing this won't, you know, desync them or anything. We'll see. Huh. Okay, so Michelle Fuller wants us to sponsor this thing that wants to get more women into technology. It costs 70k and that amount of money is nothing for us. We might as well do it. It's not like sponsoring this could hurt us or anything, right? Plus, if you look at our employees right now, you'll see we have three women and three men. So really, we're already exemplifying that goal. So that should be fine. All right, so Block Lord Matumbo's off the market. But more importantly, look at Jonathan. You notice right next to his icon, there's this little electrical symbol. I'm pretty sure that's the boost button. It looks like it needs a little time to charge up and then we can use it. Though I'm not quite sure how it will boost yet. Maybe we get to pick what we want to boost, maybe we don't. Anyway, so looking at some publishing contracts, we have Comedy Simulation, which doesn't sound good. We have City, which we might have a few ideas, I'm not sure. This is on the inbox though, so that could be pretty cool. Next, we have Any Topic, Any Genre, but it's on the TES-64. I'm pretty sure this is getting canceled soon, so we're not doing that contract. Finally, we have Hacking Any Genre, which is also on the inbox. And the contract doesn't look bad. The score is an 8 though, and I don't have any topics for hacking, I don't think. Pretty sure I don't. So the only other option is City Any Genre or Hacking Any Genre. I'm gonna need to look at our game ideas. So I actually found a game idea that we could do for City, but then I noticed a problem. This thing is medium, medium, large, and medium. So really, no point in doing most of these contracts. The one large contract is on the TS-64. So at this point, I think we're gonna do something a little different. Last episode, we made a sequel to one of the worst games ever. This episode, we'll make a sequel to one of our best games ever, Deus Equis. I mean, we might not be able to match the number of fans gained, but if we can get like 30 or 40,000, that'll still be pretty good. Especially if we can get maybe, I don't know, an all 10, that'd be awesome. Anyway, the game idea is from Bob and Threadbear. Basically, the sequel will take place one generation after the first game. In the wake of the most interesting cyborg in the world's exploits, corporations from around the world will attempt to recreate his particular blend of cyberware and manliness in order to define the future of humanity. Character creation options include a white man with an incredible chin, a handsome black man, a white man with animals who follow him around, and a black man with amazing pecs who screams at everything. It shall be called Deus Equis Old Spice Wars. Now besides making this game to get tens across the board, I'm also making this game to hopefully experiment a little more with multi-genre. Though if we're going to do multi-genre, there's actually something else I need to show off first. Well, remember last episode, I said the order of these genres might matter. Well, Bobbin suggested a really easy way to test whether that's true or not. So if we set this game currently to sports, action, and RPG, you'll see us as good combo. However, then it should be very easy to just switch the order and then check out what it is. As you can see, RPG action doesn't say good combo. So clearly the order of the genres do matter. Probably. I mean, at least since the last update, the information they give you seems to be pretty consistent. So I think we can trust it. Now, the original Deus Ex was a sci-fi adventure game. This time around, maybe we'll do it as a... Well, actually, let's look at the data. Now, looking at what we have on sci-fi, looks like sci-fi RPG is a great combination. And considering how well Deus Equis did, I'm pretty sure sci-fi adventure was also a great combination. Did I forget to record it? Whatever. 
My question is, what happens if both of the genres are great? Do you get like a super great combination or is it just a regular great combination? We'll try this out and see what happens. And hopefully we'll get even more information in the game report than last time. However, if we're going to do adventure and RPG, what order should we do them in? Should we do adventure RPG or RPG adventure? Of course, there's still the matter of sequels. The original game was an adventure game, so should we make the primary genre adventure as well? Because that's definitely not what we did for Blocklord Matumbo, and we didn't get penalized for it. But this time, let's stick to the original. Anyway, as for the audience, we'll leave it mature, just like the original. Platform. We could do the PC. We know adventure games are great on it. But we could also try some of the new consoles. Should we go for the inbox? Well, I don't think that's really necessary. For that generation, I know the PlayStation 2 kicked ass, even though it was the weaker of the three consoles. So we might as well stick with the play system too. Plus, I don't really remember the target audience of the Xbox being different, so is it really a big deal? Anyway, the engine's gonna be our new 3D engine since I've said that we're gonna be a 3D development studio. And the title of the game, of course, was Deus Ex's Old Spice Wars. Of course, we're still doing the best 3D graphics. We didn't level that up last episode, which was a little disappointing. Oh, by the way, there's something else I wanna show off. If you look under training for Visor, you'll notice that he's level seven and he has all these specializations now. And what's interesting about these specializations is their technology and design requirements sort of confirms a lot of our suspicions. If you look at engine, it's clearly very tech heavy. If you look at story and quest, it's clearly very design heavy. And if you look at stage three, you'll notice graphics is a complete mix of design and technology. However, there's also a few surprises. For example, if you look at gameplay, you'll see it's design heavy, just like story and quest. So this whole time where I said Visor should be doing gameplay because he's balanced might have been the wrong choice. In stage two, everything's about as expected except level design, which is slightly higher in technology. As for stage three, the surprises are world design is not super design heavy. It's just a slight advantage in design. And sound is the same way. In fact, stage three has no tech heavy parts at all. But it isn't really design heavy either. So I guess really anyone can work in stage three, it seems. Granted, this is all based on the hypothesis that the specialization requirements match how each section actually works. But I think it looks pretty good, right? At least I think it's credible. Okay, so we're doing an adventure RPG, which normally for stage one, I do pretty much the same thing. As in, I drop the engine, I increase the story and quests, I have a lot of gameplay. In terms of features, all we really need to drop is video playback from the engine. That's just not required. We might edge it up a little bit just so we have 100% in engine. Yeah, there we go. Plus maybe multiplayer will work in this case. I don't know, maybe we're playing two of the most interesting cyborgs in the world. As for balancing the job, it's still pretty straightforward. Erica is still on engine. And despite our new suspicion that gameplay is actually design heavy, we'll probably still leave it to Visor because in terms of design, he's actually the second highest. We probably need to train up Marcus some more since he's supposed to be design heavy as well. Though actually, if both parts are design heavy in the same way, maybe we should think about Jennifer some more. Should we be putting Jennifer on story and quest or gameplay? Well, since this is an adventure RPG, I would think the story and quest is the most important. So we'll leave it as is. Look at Jonathan's boost. Maybe he'll be ready for stage three. Anyway, this news article is about us sponsoring that technology thing. So yeah, that's cool. I don't think it does anything for us yet, but maybe it'll change who we can hire in the future. Ah, there we go. Design is finally pulling ahead. Excellent. I really want this game to have good balance. And I think being design heavy makes total sense for an adventure RPG. Actually, we almost have 150 design points. Holy shit, that's a lot. We're definitely on track to set a new record for design if we can continue this. However, we don't actually have that many design focused people anymore. So maybe we'll lose some momentum. But anyway, in terms of time allocation, dialogue has to be important. Artificial intelligence is not. I'm not really sure how important level design was though. I have a feeling it's not that important. Just a gut feeling though. The fact that the game report information doesn't show up when we do multi-genre is sort of an issue. But anyway, to balance this out, obviously we can't have Jennifer there, so we'll give it to Marcus. 
and that's really about all we can do. Everything else is about fine. So that means we probably should cut some features from artificial intelligence. In fact, maybe we have to cut both. Because I think if we do just one feature, can we do the minimum? Oh, we can actually do the minimum very easily. So do we want better AI or AI companion? I think AI companion works. I have a whole crew of the most interesting cyborgs in the world. It'll be drop in, drop out, co-op multiplayer, or something like that. I'm pretty sure a few games during this era had that. Horse marketing. Hmm, and do we want to do a small campaign? Well, as we saw from last episode, getting it hyped up will allow you to make a lot of money. And since our profits are in the millions right now when we do games, spending 350k more on a small marketing campaign is not a huge increase. But the increase in hype might be worth it. Plus, I have an excess of money right now anyway. Oh, media inquiry. All right, let's do it. Uh, uh. Let's hype the shit out of this. I mean, this was our big game before, and I have a feeling from the number so far that's going to be our big game again. Another thing that I have to remember to keep an eye on is Jonathan's boost. It's getting pretty close, so I'm hoping it's going to be ready for stage three. Points wise, though, we're not doing as good as stage one. We only gain about 100 design points, and that's kind of weird. Maybe it's because we don't have enough design heavy people. Anyway, for Division of Labor, I'm going to put Jonathan Richardson on graphics and sound. When his boost ready, that should be when he starts developing graphics. Our only option for world design is Michelle Fuller. There's really no one else we can put there. So let's just edge up sound a little more to get 100%, and we're good. Okay, I boosted him, and I might have boosted him too early. Granted, I can't really tell if it increased his output or not. And it only really lasted one development part, so... That's not cool. But we also gained new research somehow. Multi-platform. Hmm, that'll be interesting. Oh, and here we go. The Dreamcast is dead. The dream is gone. Oh well, it happens. Which of course is why I avoided developing on it. Look at this, no one's tired, everyone's going full steam, and this might be a 400 point game. Plus the balance looks pretty good. We're a little more design heavy than technology, so I think that's good. However, here's the tricky part. We still have two more months until G3. Should we wait it out? I kind of want to, because I really want to do a big booth this time, just to see what happens, you know? I'm trying to bolster the hype though, so it doesn't drop too much, but it looks like when you try to hype the game and you're not actually developing it, hype doesn't actually move upwards. I guess they know we're not actively developing, so hype's not growing. Anyway, like I said, we're gonna do a large booth, because really our last two games were also pretty good. So if a large booth is like a medium booth and shows off your previous games, I think it's the best choice. Plus, I wanna get in the top 100, damn it. Oh man, we're starting to hemorrhage hype. Maybe if I do another campaign, it'll at least stop the loss? Nope, doesn't look like it. It's still dropping like a fly. Jonathan's boost is ready again though. So I wonder, is it blue because he's tech heavy so it's a technology boost? Or it's blue because they picked a color and it happened to be blue? Anyway, looking at our G3 booth, I can't actually tell whether they're showing our previous games. I mean, they're definitely showing our current game, so... Holy shit, that's a lot of people. God damn. We better get in the top 100. Yes! We made it to the top 100. 47th. Not bad. And look at that hype boost. I think that was maybe 220, but we need to finish that game. We can't lose any more damn hype. Yeah, play system's gone. No big deal. Oh, look at that. New records and everything. It's pretty cool. And of course, good management. And our 3D graphics has leveled up, so we're going to get some new research options due to it. Special training's available for Arnt. And holy shit, that's a lot of new features. I'm not sure we're going to be able to make a new game engine to level up 3D Graphics V4 for a while. Plus, there's actually a bunch of other stuff I need to research. I've been ignoring my staff. Like, apparently, I need a design specialist right away. I'm not really spending my money properly. Anyway, let's see the game review. Okay, that's nice. Well, we've been down this road before. Getting hopeful, though. 
It's still all depending on all game. If they fuck with us again, burn them down. You motherfuckers. Well, fine, fine, whatever. We'll take another 9.75. We'll see what happens in the game report and hopefully get some conclusions about how multi-genre works. Plus, it would be cool to see the final sales numbers. Okay, so looking at the game report, we see that sci-fi and adventure RPG is a great combination. So I'm pretty sure when each individual genre is a great combination, together they're also a great combination. We also learned the topic and audience match was great, mature and sci-fi, but there's a bit that's kind of confusing. Just like last episode, it says graphics or something was important for this type of game. But what does it mean by this type of game? Because if you look at platform and genre match, it just says adventure and play system 2. It doesn't have the secondary genre at all. However, I do remember that consoles usually did not match up with adventure games very well. I know we did one on the TES and the game lane. So maybe the RPG part is just being excluded, but it did help us make a better match. Ultimately, I'm not sure yet, and we need more data. Now looking at the final sales numbers, we made a lot of money, sold a lot of units, and gained a decent number of fans. The fact that our platform and genre match wasn't great is probably why we only got a top sales rank of 2. However, since the fan gain wasn't amazing, I think we'll continue our habit of checking for publishing deals and only doing them when we have a perfect topic for them. Plus, they actually have to give me large contracts instead of small or medium nonsense. It's a little too late in the game for that. But that's it for this episode. Next episode, we'll get our design specialist, as well as probably train a few more people in Boost, just to figure out what it actually does. But until then, thank you for watching, and hope to see you guys next time.